Bull elephants are often given the reputation of being violent, mad, and uncontrollable in captive environments. And the truth is, bull elephant behavior does differ from female elephant behavior quite a bit. And one reason is that bull elephants go through must. Let's break down exactly what that means. Must is a phenomenon in male elephants that marks a period of sexual activity that usually starts in their 20s and, in a healthy bull, may continue to their 50s and 60s. However, the exact ages that must begins and ends can vary significantly by the individual. Bull elephants go into must about once a year, with each cycle lasting between two and four months. The length of must often depends on the bull's health, however additional factors such as age can come into play when estimating how long a bull will be in must. There are many cases of bulls going into a must for just a couple of days and others that stay in it for up to a year. The easiest way to tell if a bull elephant is in must is to see if they're secreting from their temporal glands. The temporal glands are located between the eyes and the ears on an elephant's temples. And when looking closely, you can see a small hole where the gland is located. During must, bulls secrete a hormone-rich liquid called temperin from their glands, which leaves a stained wet streak down the sides of the face. Based on how far down these streaks go, you can tell whether they're in peak must or pre-post must. Another sign of must is wetness on the insides of the back legs. While an elephant is in must, he drips urine from the penis onto the legs. Similarly to the temporal gland secretions, the intensity of the urine spots on the legs can indicate which phase of must the bull is in. Female elephants can smell these hormone-rich secretions from miles away to know that a bull is in the area. Captive bull elephants all over the world suffer during must due to improper must management. In facilities that use elephants for work, tourism, or other exploitative activities, bulls are often chained full-time in the sun during must with little access to food and water. This logic comes from the thought that the reproductive system is the first thing to shut down when the body is in survival mode to conserve energy. Unfortunately, this method often backfires, leading captive bulls to die of starvation, dehydration, and infections from standing in their own urine and feces for months. However, we cannot change this practice without first acknowledging why this happens. While in must, bulls significantly alter their social behaviors to prioritize seeking out a mate. This urge to procreate is caused by a spike in their reproductive hormones. Testosterone levels, for example, can increase up to 100 times their baseline levels during must. The dramatic increase in testosterone in a bull elephant's body during must can cause them to be unpredictable, hyperreactive, and more aggressive. There are endless stories on the internet recounting dangerous and even deadly encounters with elephants in must. This is why it's crucial for facilities to address and consider mahout safety in the ways elephants are being managed. When management isn't prioritizing mahout safety, we start to see many cruel conditions for bull elephants. A lack of resources often stops facilities from providing proper must management. Usually this means not enough land, building materials, or money. By supporting sanctuaries and nonprofits working globally for improved elephant welfare, you can help combat these issues and contribute to fighting to give elephants the best lives possible. In the cases where facilities don't want to put the money into improving the lives of their elephants, you can get involved by speaking out against the facility, putting pressure on them, and spotlighting their lack of welfare on public forums. This will often cause them to change their methods to win back some support. If you see poor elephant welfare at a facility while traveling, be sure to contact nonprofits or individuals who work in animal welfare who can reach out to the government and expedite change in the facility you've seen. And if you're planning a trip to Asia soon and want to ensure you're not contributing to elephant exploitation, check out our ethical elephant facilities list. If you learned something about elephants from this post, do us a favor and like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.